approved participants. We'll be going live in 10 minutes. This is the Stephen Pope Ask Me Any nice. Amazon Question. Weekly, Fridays at noon.
We'll be going live in under five minutes. The My Amazon Guy Ask Me Any Amazon Question. Type your question into the comment section right now. Hey guys, my name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. We've got a new format that we've been working on, uh, still ironing out some kinks here, but we're going to be doing live interviews with Amazon sellers and potentially some virtual assistants as well that are working on Amazon accounts. And our goal is just to give you kind of a different flavor, a different take. So for the last few years, we've been doing live Q&A where uh, I take questions by chat, and this is kind of a new flavor for that. So we're going to have our first guest come on here momentarily. And uh, they're going to be able to ask me any Amazon question. Uh, we've got about five people in queue. If you are an Amazon seller, you want to join this, uh, you just have to register on the Zoom link and we can still let you in. Uh, and we'll be taking a few questions from our YouTube chat as well. So if you guys want to join us, uh, feel free to do that. But we're ready for our first guest here. Send them on in while we wait for that. Um, just tell you a little bit of things I've been up to. So we have seen quite a bit of interesting growth on our Mag School courses. So these are ten dollar, twenty dollar courses over at mag-school.com, and these are courses on everything that it takes to be an Amazon seller. So if you guys haven't checked that out, feel free. On here we have courses for how to make premium A plus content international launching, SEO courses, reviving sales, PPC, catalog, launching, logistics, variations, design, and more. So you guys feel free to go check that out. The newest one we just launched, it's $10 off until next uh, Sunday. And that's our advanced SEO market share course. This is completely brand new. All right. So uh, we also have sellercentraljobs.com. If you guys haven't checked that out, Jobs related to anything selling on Amazon, you can find a virtual assistant or go find your own job. This is for US, PH, and everybody in between. Um, and uh, you can find anything 
related to a PPC, we've got filters. So you can filter out the jobs. So if you're looking for a PPC expert or an SEO expert, and you can load your mag school uh, option, uh, your certificates straight into Solar Central jobs. All right. So we've got our first uh, guest coming on in here. I'm going to go ahead and add them. Let's see if I can find not seeing the option to suggest your video share here. Where did that go? Uh, I'm not sure why you can, can't share video here. So sorry about this, Sean. Stand by. We're trying to figure out some bugs. Sean, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I don't know. Can you can you share your video? Uh, it says I can't. It says you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Well, we'll go ahead and go forward with this while we try and troubleshoot some of those bugs. So, Sean, what can I do for you today? Uh, I was just jumping on to, to kind of hear. Uh, I had a call with you last week and, and was able to put some of those things in motion. Just kind of wanted to jump on and see what everybody else is doing and uh, see what, uh, what kind of stuff I can glean from that. Well, any questions you have today? Um... We're, we're looking to um, throw some videos up on TikTok to try to drive some, some traffic. Um, I don't know that uh, there's really anything, any questions I have. Uh, you know, you had some great comments about my uh, EBC, and so we're A-B testing some, some, new, uh, some new material and just trying to see if that's going to help drive uh, some more sales. Well, very good. Glad that that session was helpful. Um, hopefully some of those A-B tests work very well uh, to prove some of the EBC changes. We do recommend including 500 words of copy and enhanced brand content whenever possible. Um, that helps with the SEO and everything good there. And then also uh, the product grid. My favorite format for enhanced brand content is that product grid with the ability to showcase all of the other things that you sell as a brand. I'll share my screen here to kind of demonstrate that. And at the bottom of A plus content, this is that product grid right there. See how I can click between products like this. That's can always be very beneficial. Right. This is premium A plus content. And then that's the brand story. So a lot of people, a lot of sellers still don't have their brand stories built. Uh, and we're taking it to the next level on my own brand, Age of Sage. So we have like customized brand story. So this is a man product. So here we have more of a man angle. But if we go to the age of sage brand store, we go to one of my little bit more feminine product and scroll down. We have a different brand story for them. So you can customize these brand stories, get horizontal uh, real estate, which can be very beneficial. Uh, and, and so there's the man version, there's the, kind of the female version. And then this gigantic premium A plus content, you get such gigantic photos, uh, which is very valuable. Um, different types of modules here, which can be also valuable. Uh, and then you can even load videos. So we have a video on on the soap one here. Load the video straight into the A plus content. So this is all brand new. You used to have to pay like a quarter million dollars to get access to premium A plus content, uh, but very different experience now. We just had a. We just got through uh, fifteen approved. EBC. So hopefully, uh, I think they only they only allow access once a month is when they approve it. So hopefully, next month we can get in on it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and to get access to the premium plus content, you just have to have the fifteen EBCs like you mentioned, and you have to have the brand story submitted. Uh, and we've seen a lot of people gain access to that in the last couple of months. So hopefully, that gets up and running for you. Well, very good. Any other questions, Sean, or any other thoughts? Uh, no, not really. I thought I was going to come on and, and listen to, to what yeah, we've got. <laughs> we've got a new format. So the, the way uh, um, anybody that's a seller that doesn't want to go on camera, they can they can listen in at youtube.com slash my Amazon guy. Uh, but, you know, every time you try a new format out, it, it can be a little confusing at times. So, Sean, thanks. Thanks for stopping by and talking about EBC, though. Uh, feel free to finish watching over on YouTube. Appreciate it. No problem. 
Uh, and then, all right, so we're ready for our next guest. If we've got another one in queue, if not, I'm going to go to the YouTube comments that we've got going on. Oh, looks like we got Lyle, maybe. Lyle, are you there? Hello. Hello, Stephen. Hey, Lyle. Um, it's not allowing me to do my video. So. Well, uh, that there's probably a setting we have messed up on. That's probably not your fault there, Lyle. So, uh, Polina, on the back end, if you can try and figure that out. Uh, but, Lyle, what's your question today? Um, I was. It was something which I um, I just saw the an invitation come through. So um, it's been a pretty mad day. So I thought I'd just jump on anyway. Um, sure. But, ask ask me anything. Any Amazon question. Um. I'm just going to see if I can turn this up um, a little bit. Um, I was explaining to Polina that um, I'm with my three and a half year old son. I'm trying to keep him quiet at the moment. Um, That's all right. To... <laughs> um, I'm just going to ask um, my colleague who's with me as well as to, I think our biggest thing really would be um, the inventory performance indicators. That we, we've had a big problem with that for a number of years now. And no matter what we do, we can't seem to do anything about everything we everything Amazon asks us to do, we um we do and the nothing seems to change. It's just rather frustrating. What what's not changing? The the content on the page or the IPI, the IPI score. Oh the IPI score. Okay. So what's your IPI score right now? I think the last time last time we checked, it was about 316. It's 302 has gone down to. We um we got, I don't know, some we were fine and all of a sudden um Amazon um can't remember exactly what happened, but um we they just plummeted. And when we tried to explain what happened to them, they said yes, we can see that. It is a um, glitch on our side. Um, however, they don't seem to want to do anything about it. So it's just, we managed to get it up to about 340, but it's just, no matter what we do, we do everything they ask for. We increase the sell-through, you know, the sell-through rate. We make sure that, the, you know, all of the, the key performance um, metrics are, we do exactly what we can do, but they just don't, <laughs> nothing seems to work. So obviously it hits us big time with... Um, so so generally speaking, when I see an IPI score issue, it's generally because the, the account has overstocked some of the products. So if you go into where they track the IPI score, and I'm going to share my screen momentarily to kind of demonstrate this, it'll show you, you know, how, how you're being affected. Uh, and if you have something that's not moving two to three times over the course of a quarter. So let's say you have one unit. Uh, if it's not selling for every one unit you have at FBA, it's not selling two and a half turns over the course of a quarter, your IPI score will generally suffer quite a bit for that. Um, so that would be my first guess for you. So I'm going to pull up my screen and kind of walk through. So I have an IPF 498, which is a fairly decent one. and here you can see the top influencing factors right there. Excess inventory is the number one factor. And you can see right there, mine is on, kind of on the cusp. I'm, I'm slightly in the red. Sell through, I'm in the red. And then stranded and in stock, I'm in the greens, which is good. I paid about $745 in FBA fees last month with it sticking around. But my excess inventory percentage is, is actually kind of excessive. Uh, and you can see also how the IPS score tracks over time. So I've been right around that 500 mark for 10 weeks now. Um, but, but what I would do is I would go into this section in the IPI and I would, the first thing I would do is I would tackle excess and F, FBA sell through. So my, my sell through is a 0.8 here. My excess is 33% and I still have a 500 IPI. Um, we, but when you click, go ahead. Sorry, I'm just going to say that the biggest challenge we have is that for well, the past, I don't know, maybe six months now, twelve months, all those all those metrics have been in the in the green, light light green, or the or the full green at the, the far right hand side. 
Mm -hmm. um, 0% extra excess. So um, this is the challenge we've got. We've been onto them for so long now. Um, and all our, you know, you know where you had some in the red, some like, et cetera. All ours are right on the right hand side in the green. So that's that's promising. Can I ask um, how many units you're turning on the account a month? Um, with me. You can think... you can check that out in the business reports. So feel free to go grab that if you'd like. Um, but but so here is my most overstock product. This this product was a dud for us. Uh, it's my fabulous box. My my big breadwinner right here. And you'll see like I've severely discounted the box. We're not making any like we're losing money to sell it at thirty. Um, and, and like, I'm kind of hoping that the Christmas rush helps me out, but I'm not really expecting it. Uh, yeah. and there's 800 excess units here. And that's like, if these 800 units just simply didn't exist, my API score would probably be an extra 50 points higher, maybe even higher than that. Uh, so if you're sitting on a lot of inventory, that's not turning, that would be my, my first intuition, but do you have, do you have a unit count by chance? Number of units you're turning? About six fifty a month. Six fifty a month. Okay, so so you have a lot now. How much stock do you have at FBA right now? Um, let me just check that for you. Um, we have been running it right the way down. Um, like I mentioned, for the past twelve months, we've been this IPI thing has been hitting us. So we did everything we could, and we're just running it right down because we've been hit with so much. Um, especially in the last quarter with FBA fees and storage fees. So in actually in Amazon at the moment, I think we've only got 48 units thereabouts. Okay. So maybe, maybe yeah. it's an in-stock issue. So like here you can see my restock limits and my, my storage volumes. Uh, so, you know, I have a 28,000 max inventory level. I'm only using 12,000 of it. Um, and it shows, it shows the ability and, you know, how many units are at Amazon. You can see it right there. And so if certain units aren't turning and you don't take a maneuver, that's what's going to affect the IPI score pretty hardcore. So I would, I would really focus in on these two reports. I, I would go in and I'd look at your IPI. I would look at um, you know, where, where they're saying your, your IPI is lower. And then the other thing to keep in mind too, is if you go out of stock, that's going to damage it. Uh, and, and it's, it's a rolling figure over, over three months. So even if yeah. you have a really good execution in the last two weeks, last month, it's going to take that full three months, um, before you're going to have any, any way to execute that. So hopefully that's helpful. Lyle, any, anything else? Um, no, uh, I got the imagine. video thing figured out by the way. So you're welcome to come on camera if you'd like. Is it? Hey, there you are, Lyle. Um, so yeah, I, I, right now, uh, like I mentioned, it was something um, quite last minute. Um, I think my colleague might have a question. What? Maybe yeah, you yeah. feel free. Just wonder if something with brand registration on it, like product, but it's been listed under the wrong brand name. How do you make it into turn it into the right brand name? So being brand registered for um, a certain product, but then. The product has been listed under the wrong brand name. Um, how does that? How can we get that moved across? So, so switching a brand name um, is probably a seven out of ten difficulty. So it's not end of end of the you know end of the story bad news, but it's not easy at the same time. Um, if if the wrong brand is brand registered, so the brand that you're switching away from is brand registered, this maneuver is harder. So do you know if the, the, the wrong brand is brand registered? No, it's, it's um, I think it's the correct brand, which is brand registered, but somebody else had listed the product um, on the wrong, wrong brand. So we need to move the, so the product A, for instance, is listed under the wrong brand. And we need to move that into the correct brand, which is brand registered. Okay, so if if the wrong brand is not brand registered, you should just be able to do a template upload with the with the correct brand. If that doesn't work, do a delete and a relist. And if that doesn't work, then do um, uh, a ticket on brand registry asking them to correct it. And you're going to get an auto rejection on that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to reply to that and say, here's a picture with proof of the correct brand on the packaging. 
please fix this brand attribute. And then sometimes you have to push back a little bit, but, but often the case, as long as the um, attribute is not brand registered, this is, this is not as hard. If it is brand registered, what you'll have to do is unregister it to get it shifted off typically. And then, and then um, the, another technique that used to work, that doesn't work anymore is like create a duplicate ASIN and then try and merge them, but you can't merge two listings that don't have the same brand name anymore. So that's why yeah. that doesn't, that doesn't yeah, work anymore. An absolute nightmare. Um, so no, that's, that's really good. Thank you very much. All right, Lyle, feel free to join us. Uh, finish watching on YouTube there, youtube.com slash my Thanks for coming in, man. No worries. Thank you very much. All right. And then uh, let's see if we've got another guest coming up here from Broad Green UK. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at some YouTube questions as well. So let's head over there and see what questions we have in our chat queue. Let me know what you guys think about the new format. This is all a test to see, you know, how this will work and see if we get any interest here. Uh, Kevin says, good afternoon from Lakeland, Florida. I, I, I remember where that dude lives. He makes that comment a lot. It's awesome. Craig says, is a lot of clicks with no sales bad for a listing? If so, what point should I pause those? Uh, this is a difficult question, Craig, because generally any traffic is good traffic. And if it's non-converting, it could affect negatively on some of the SEO. But if the traffic's coming from outside of Amazon, I would say keep it coming. Um, Amazon's going to want that traffic, even if it's not converting on your listing, they might convert on somebody else's. Um, but if it's within Amazon, I would say that traffic's probably hurting you a little bit. Evoke Valley says, you guys selling in the UK nowadays, can you suggest the trending markets? I'd say uh, UK is about 12% mm, of the US. Germany is about 25, 33%, depending on category. Uh, Canada is about 7% of the US. Uh, outside of that, I don't think a lot of the other markets are worth doing. Um, you know, Europe is probably the second best place to be after the North American continent. Japan, Brazil, Singapore, Australia, a lot of those are just emerging markets that just may or may not be worth the hassle of trying to figure out how to do logistics, customs, VAT, taxes, and all that. Very, very difficult. JKY says, launching into the second month now, lots of clicks on PPC and no sales. Prices checked, listings checked, A-plus content optimize. What can I do to get regular sales? Um, JKY, I would say one of two things. First thing I would say is update your main image. And second, lower your price. If you can't get the sales after doing both of those, then the listing is probably dead, probably not in good shape. We do have um, quite a few videos on how to fix a product and how to fix the launch. Um, the, the course that I would recommend from our mag school is the launching on Amazon course. And then for on the free side, we have a couple of videos where we talk about the main image hack, uh, and they're very, very helpful. So maybe Geraldine, you could post a link to that in the comments. Um, we got two videos that would be really good for JKY. Both of them talk about fixing the main image. Uh, we also had a really viral post on LinkedIn this week where we talked about pricing uh, and my price launch guide, which I'm going to show up on screen here. And during, uh, this is, this is my opinion on what you should do when you're first launching a product, like week one, 50% of your target price. That's for a lot of people, this is going to be an absurd, aggressive idea. They're not going to like it. Um, and they're like, what about my margins? But it's so worth it. The amount of money that you'll waste trying to convert somebody via PPC when it won't do any good, it won't won't have any effect uh, at full price without reviews, et cetera. So that's why I really recommend this guide. Uh, I feel very strongly that this is an effective methodology for almost any product ever. Uh, and when you first launch, be super aggressive. Now, by you know by week four, you're, you're you know you've moved twenty percent up on the price. Uh, and then hopefully by week eight, you're getting that target price. Uh, this is going to create maximum velocity. So remember, when it comes to Amazon, you need sales to get sales. So what better way to get sales than to allow for a low price to generate that lift? Uh, so it's a very effective 
way to make that happen. So highly recommend that. It's probably going to be priced for the main image there. Neil Robson says, I have a product that is a cannabis complimentary. So you're already in a hostile category already. My auto campaign keeps advertising on keywords like weed accessories. My question is, can I target these keywords with an exact match without a flag? Um, <laughs> probably, but at some point, at some point, you're going to get banned from ads. There's no question about it. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, Neil. And I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you can get away with an exact match or not, to be honest, but I, I think it's, it's inevitable you're going to hit, hit a curve there. Um, Brent Bendy says, can we do sponsored brands ads even if we don't own the brand? Well, you can't even access sponsored brands unless your brand registered. So that is a factor to keep in mind. Um, but if you have access to do brand registry and you want to advertise on somebody else's brand, I don't know if that's possible. It might be, but I'm not sure on that. Which strategies, I'm trying to think of like the use case of why I'd want to do that. Which strategies should we do Amazon PPC, optimize Amazon PPC for ASINs that have uh, various SKUs? I'm not sure I understand that question entirely, but if you have lots of variations, I would advertise every single one of them. Uh, and sometimes doing a heavy optimization campaign where you've got lots of segmentation with more than, you know, let's say you got like 10 SKUs, I would have like 10 different campaigns going one for each SKU at bare minimum. Uh, you also may want to have one super auto campaign with an ad group for each product with a low bid. Um, and just make sure on high SKU accounts that you're advertising lots of PPC. Michael says, do you need to use an IP accelerator firm to file the trademark? Answer, no, you do not. This has been the case for more than two years now. At my Amazon guy, we have filed more than 1,200 trademarks. We're not part of the IP Accelerator program. We do use an attorney. Our cost is generally less than the IP Accelerator, 825 bucks. And you can get your brand registered in under seven days using our technique. Uh, the reason I think you should use us is because we, we, we avoid a lot of mistakes that we see the IP Accelerator make uh, and, and bypass a lot of hassle. Um, Amazon is basically using a bunch of law firms that aren't Amazon focused. So they, they mess up your trademark name. They don't file it the correct way. You run into a lot of snags. We got a bunch of FAQs. If you guys want to check it out, pretty much any question I've ever received about trademarks is on this page. We've got a brand registry guide right there as well. Just go to my Amazon.com slash TM. Talk about what a trademark is and whether you should use a word or a logo trademark, how long they last. And you can see that, I mean, the amount of FAQs here, it's, very extensive. So check out those resources. Uh, going back to the questions list here, Wajid said, Hey, Stephen, what are your views on the first inventory levels for launching a product in private label? Probably about 200 would be my, my baseline on this. Uh, depends on the product, obviously, variation count, et cetera. Obviously, you're selling clothing, maybe a lot, lot less. But in general, just getting a product off the ground, 200, probably not a bad idea. Rudy says, hi, from Houston, Texas. Jeffrey Vallon says, what would be considered a good amount or percentage for subscribe and save customers when selling in the supplements category? I don't think I've ever looked at the percentage myself, Jeff. Uh, what I have generally done is like, hey, if I've got more than 30 subscribers, I'm probably pretty happy. Um, some of the best subscribe and save products that I've seen have hundreds of subscribe and save. You can also add a discount while you're doing subscribe and save. Uh, and you have the ability to uh, really push and implement um, a lot more people coming back and purchasing it over and over again. And subscribe and save is automatic, but the percentage that you add to the discount for subscribe and save is enabled by the seller. So if you want to add an extra 10%, I'd highly recommend it. We'll definitely add a lot of value. Wajid says, thank you. Uh, and so those are all the questions in queue we have today. Uh, we've been trying to test out, trying to do a new format here, kind of coming up a little short, a little bit of a bust. Not too many sellers wanted to come on camera today. So we may revisit whether we continue the format or not, but we really wanted to try something new. Uh, kind of wanted to do, you know, what Gary V had done a couple of years ago. Uh, there's also another famous guy, I forget his name off the top of my head, Samuel something. Uh, dating expert guy did a pretty good format with this where they'd come on camera and just talk about it. So we'll see what happens with that. 
Uh, my name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we have our we have multiple shows during the week. We've got Matt Davis doing PPC um, earlier in the week. Jason Masperteo doing generic ask any questions. You can do that tomorrow at noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and we'll wish you guys.